Are y'all ready? It's like a shortened service or something. You can be seated. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 43. Jennifer, are you okay? Is she going to be all right? <laughs> That's right. Way to go, Bassett High School Band. I think we got first place in our class, right, Ryan? Yeah. yeah. If you fall asleep today while your daddy's preaching, you're going to be in trouble, okay? Thank you very much. Where's Jeremiah? He's teaching today. All right. God is good. And all the time. Again, Isaiah chapter 43. We begin this celebration of our 10th birthday, our church's 10th birthday, with looking at a verse that we first, really first talked about. Um, I'm right here, and you guys need to talk to me and not... I mean, you've been married 19 years as of Tuesday, right? How in the world Lee is still alive? I'm not sure, Anita. (laughs) Happy anniversary to Lee and Anita Hobbs. Yeah. Yeah. God is faithful and merciful too, but um, but I am here, so talk to me, not her. Okay, you can have her on Tuesday. <laughs> um, you remember April, April and Joe and and, and a few others um, sit, standing in the backyard of Trey and Sherry Harris. That um, that was the first time that I got to meet with a group of people who were beginning a new a new church. Um, it was a process that was difficult. And this afternoon, I'll talk a little bit more about how we left Orchard Drive Baptist Church. The church split and began this church. Does that mean that Orchard Drive is bad? No, it does not. Pray for them. They've had several pastors since I was there. But God is still using many, many good things, great things, really coming out of there. In fact, if I didn't intend to say this, but you know that Orchard Drive broke off of Blackberry Baptist Church. And Blackberry has continued to do some great things. Had some struggles, but do some great things. Before that, you know what? Fairway Baptist Church broke off of them. And you know how incredible it is? Fairway is one of our number one partners when it comes to back to school. By the way, Blackberry is also financially as well as people supported us. So is Orchard Drive through some of our processes. God continues to work, doesn't he? He, Even in the midst of struggles or trials or difficulties, but he's up to something new. That's what I want to talk to you about today. God is up to something. He's always up to something. You you know anybody? They get that look in their eye and you can tell when they're up to something. (laughs) <laughs> you can just look at them. In fact, those kids of yours or grandkids of yours, you can look at them and say, mm, you better watch you, <laughs> or I got my belt. <laughs> we were walking through Carver the other day. was with uh, um, Mr. Milner, who's um, one of our school board people. He was talking about how the principal used to take him to the boiler room and just give him, you know, <clears throat> corporal punishment. Do you all remember that? Boy, I do. As my wife always says, I should have gotten a few more. But... <laughs> God is up to something new. If we will remember the past, it will remind us that the future is going to be incredible. I want you to think about that. There is something different about this place we call the Community Fellowship. Yes, there's something different about it, but there's also something different about the people that come to church here or who have come to church here. If you're here during the week sometimes, you're going to see some of that difference, lived out, talked out, or however you want to look at it. But I believe what God did 10 years ago was birth in some people's hearts a desire to do something that God wanted them to do. Not so that we could be like another church, or not really so that we could be different, but so that we could be who God made us to be. See, God did not make me to be Billy Graham. By the way, tomorrow is his 98th birthday. Wow, incredible. Um, Pray for Billy Graham and thank God for Billy Graham organization. But, you know, God didn't make me to be him and to preach like him. Or he didn't make Jennifer to sing like, you know, um, Aretha Franklin or somebody else. No, he made her to be Jennifer and me to be Michael and you to be you. But he's up to something new inside of us. In fact, he brings us through phases, right? He'll take us to that point. We graduate from this and then we move on to that. And God's doing the same thing inside of us. And it's time to renew our commitment to the passion that God has given us for the purpose of this church. And I believe that's what the next 10 weeks are going to be about. It's us learning about, God, where have you brought us from? Now, where are you going to take us to make us ready? God, rebuild those walls. God, bring, just like he did Nehemiah, remind us of your faithfulness and show us again what you want to do. Why have we chosen, or why have you maybe, chosen to be a part of this church? Because of the fabulous preaching. I've heard you say it before. Um, I, Johnny chose to be here today because it looks like I'm bald like he is now. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate you reminding me of that. Um, and I won't blame my barber down here. By the way, this barber down here will be 91 next month. I'm so glad that Burnett's here today. We miss you, brother, when you're not. Give him a hand. 
<clears throat> and if you would like a shave, it's $100, and I get 90 of it. <laughs> but I, um, why have we chosen to be here? Well, for 10 years, God has continued to show some things to us. In the next 10 weeks, we're going to talk about um, our history and the happenings that are happening even right now and the future. Some people have come and gone through those times. I don't understand all of that, but I do understand that God has done some things that only He could do, and we're just here sometimes just for the ride or sometimes to do the work. But our commitment continues, continues to be from John 10.10. 10. Look at the, the Scripture here on the screen. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Will you read the last part with me? I come that they might have life and have it abundantly. God wants us to have what kind of life? Again, God wants us to have what kind of life? Uh, what is abundant? Let me, let me give you some illustrations of what abundant is, okay? Last Sunday, beautiful weekend at the Speedway. Please pray for those that were in the accident Sunday night. But a beautiful weekend at the Speedway. If you looked over the Speedway, um, where you should have been, Lee, <laughs> where many of us were working, there were people everywhere. It seemed like that. It was just incredible. Beautiful weekend. And it was an abundant weekend. Okay? Y'all see that? Would you like another picture of abundance? Krispy Kreme when the light's on. When that, when that thing's rolling down, that's... <laughs> right? And, and people want to talk about those other kind, the chocolate or the sprinkled. No, 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 no. Glaze, baby. That's all. But, but isn't that abundance, really? How about when you remember Thanksgiving's coming two weeks away, right? When Grandma or your mama cooked and she put that spread out, it was like there's 50,000 people coming, not just the 50 of us. That, that's abundance. But do you know what else what abundance is? It's when I look back at what God has done in some of my kids' lives, and I'm like, wow, the abundance. To so open up the, the newspaper online yesterday and to see Ryan's name in the, in the A honor roll, way to go, my boy. And many of our other kids who were on the honor roll, and Emma and Luke and, and so many others, and how incredible. Why? Because we've abundantly been blessed. And there's more coming. We need to expect what God... The thief comes to steal for, from us, but God wants us to have that abundance. The community fellowship exists as a body of believers to demonstrate... Listen, this is our word, to demonstrate the love of God to our community. That's what we were called to. That's what we continue to be called to. And nothing, nothing, nothing has changed that. Think about that. Through any means possible were to demonstrate His love. We believe the church is to be the most creative institution on earth because we have the greatest message to share. When we believe those two things, here's what we must do. We must get the attention of our community and while we have their attention, tell them about who? Jesus. We may have their attention for 50 seconds or for 50 minutes or for 5 hours. The time that we have, we're to tell them about Jesus. Amen? I mean, we had more than 1,500 kids come through the parking lot on Sunday once again on our family fun night or whatever you want to call it, Halloween night. It was, it was great. Many of you were here to help. Thank you, especially those of you who worked with popcorn because it seemed like popcorn never ended. <laughs> but we got rid of it all and hot dogs. It, it, thank you. But here's the deal. Every one of those times that we hand a hot dog or, or, or shake a hand or say hello to somebody, we're able to impart a little bit about who we are. Why? Because we're telling them about who really matters. His name is... And that's what we want to continue doing. Knowing who we are, what we're about, where we're going, we're going to see God do even more in the future. I believe that with all my heart. I want you to think about the people of God, Israel, okay? The children of Israel. What did they see? They experienced so many different things. They experienced um, being in, in um, exile, where they had hard labor, difficult lives. Do you all remember some of that from Scripture, yes or no? Okay, They had that. But then they had God show up out there in the desert where they wandered for 40 years. What did God do? At nighttime there were um, pillars of fire. And, and during the day there were clouds. Who was in that fire? Or who was in the cloud during the day? Who was it? It was God. It was the Lord himself saying, I am faithful. And that's what our God's going to do for us. In Isaiah chapter 43, beginning in verse number 14. Will you stand with me as we honor God's word and look at it together? Isaiah chapter 43, beginning in verse number 14. If you're ready, say amen. Amen. Here we go. It says, and this is what the Lord says, Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sakes I will send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships that they are so proud of. I am the Lord, your Holy One. 
Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned and their lives were snuffed out like a smoldering chad, a candle wick. Verse 18. But forget all that. It is nothing to compare to what I, I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. You see, it's already begun. Do you not see it? I, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wastelands. The wild animals in the field, they're going to thank me or praise me. The jackals and owls, too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland for my chosen people so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Lord Jesus, I pray in these next few minutes as we look at this passage, as we uh, skim through some other scriptures, God, I pray that you remind us of how faithful you are. But will you give us a vision, please? And God, I, I'm not asking that you put us to sleep and give us dreams. Father, I'm really not asking that you, you give us another book. I'm just simply asking, will you renew your spirit inside of us? Remind us of your incredible overflowing love. And God, may we never, ever be the same because we've been with Jesus. And we thank you for this fact. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Isaiah 43 is an incredible place. And I, I remember, again, we're going to look at a lot of the history, but I, I remember those days that were very difficult um, back in 2006. And, and there were several things that happened in our family and in the church and in other places that just pointed in the direction of where we were going to go. Do you ever run against or um, <laughs> do you ever want to disobey? I'm going to ask you a question again, and you're going to answer it, okay? Do you ever want to not do what you're told to do? <laughs> you can run away from God all you want. He's going to catch up with you. Okay? There was a little guy in the Old Testament who got swallowed by a big fish. Anybody remember his name? Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. What did he do in the end? He still sat down under a tree and he had a pity party. But God caught up with him. And by the way, remember what God did? Nineveh accepted salvation because of this guy running from God. God still gets his way. Let me remind you, if the community fellowship shuts its doors today, God's still going to be God. Listen, if the wrong person is elected, if our write-in vote is, <laughs> you know, whoever, if, our, if the wrong person is elected on Tuesday, let me remind you who's still in charge. It's him. It's nobody else. Why? Because our God knows what needs to happen and He's going to take care of that and I want to be a part of it. How about you? You know, there are things that God wants... He has gifted you. He's gifted me. He's given this church the ability to do some things so the world will be totally, totally changed. But it begins with you and me. It begins with us understanding some things about God. need to uh, move around here just a little bit, Jamie, that quote. Let me give you a quote from Eugene Peterson. He says, A changed world begins with us. And a changed us begins when we pray. Okay, once again, okay? A changed world begins with us. And a changed us begins with prayer. We need to pray. If my people who are called by my name will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... You with me? This is our God who says, I, I want to bless you. I want to take care of you. I want to take you in a new direction. But the only way for you to go with me is for you to be changed by me. You can't be a part of my team if you don't train with my team. People say they love the church and they hate Jesus. Let me tell you, if you hate Jesus, you must hate the church too. He wants to change your life, and it begins with you. I want to be part of something greater in Martinsville and Henry County. Amen? And, and it gives me chills and thrills and whatever else you want to call it when I'm somewhere in this community, and they begin to talk about what our church has done. If, if you will, and if I go in the wrong direction, Cassim, you need to throw something, please. You and I sat in some places 10 years ago and with some people that told us and some others, you can't do this. Fooey. <laughs> God had other plans. But I want to tell you that I, I, I still have major flaws. I, 
Do you? You got some struggles in your life? Listen, God wants to take your struggles and turn them into His strengths so that He can get the glory. And I thought, still believe that I've told you many of those and kind of bared that my soul to you. But here's the deal. God wants to do incredible things. In 1 Corinthians 9.22, he says, this is Paul, he says, To the weak I become weak that I may win the weak. I have become all things to all men so that I may by all means save some. What does that verse say? This is the beginning of this message. I got a long way to go, so you need to listen. To the weak I became weak. We're good at that. Anybody? Amen? Amen. Through our, our substance abuse, through our incredible failed marriages, through our failed businesses, through our lives, through, through the pain of whatever health problem we've had, we have continued to be weak. But in that weakness, you know what God did? Incredible, incredible, incredible things been reading some stories this week of some people who are battling cancer and how people have gotten saved, nurses, doctors, family members, because somebody said it's still about Jesus. Are y'all with me? You see, he can, take, he can take what's crooked and make it straight. He, he can take what the devil intended for evil, God intends for good. Why? Because he's an incredible loving God. And we need to recognize what God is up to. How do we continue to hear his voice? It's by Digging in, listening close, staying close to God, and doing what He's called us to do. So let me give you some things. We need to recognize in this scripture some things about God. Here we go. God is great. Anybody? Okay, it's going to... Well, they, that's good, okay? <laughs> God is great. How can I recognize that God is great? Let's start here. What else in this world is great? Anything? Come on. This isn't, this isn't a game. What do you think's great? Your children. That, that's good. Thank you. Anything, what, huh? Nature. And have y'all noticed some of the leaves? When you go down to the new campus today, look off at, at the trees in front of you. It's really, really, really... What else is great? A bed. <laughs> when you ain't had one especially, right? And, and you're speaking from experience, Renee. I know that. The ocean is great. What else is great? Love. Come on, friends, parents. What was that? Money. Can be. Yeah, when God provides, right? Yeah. What else? Respect. Yeah. Opportunities. Okay. Okay. What? Music. Yeah. D -d -d Preachers are great. I love you. Did you say creatures? I could have sworn you... You said preachers are creatures. and, and uh, Creatures, yeah. So, sometimes. <laughs> I was at the new camp the other day, and I saw one of your friends casting that groundhog going right back. And I was with Warren, and Warren didn't have his gun. So we need to get us a gun over there, right? Um, but, but seriously, creatures. What, what else is great? I, I heard Bruce say cowboys. I, under, I heard you. <laughs> what else? <laughs> I'm so, wives are great. We don't want testimonies today, please. <laughs> but it's true. There are so many things that are great in life, but here's the deal. God is greater. Go back to the book of Hebrews and read from the very beginning when it says that Jesus is the exact representation, a mirror image of the Father. But here's the deal. He's better than every priest. He's better than every command. He is the first and the last. That's revelation. But the fact is He is everything. When we miss the fact that God is great, we miss everything else. Our marriages will be greater when we know that God is great. Uh, that, that money that we get, Harry, will be better when we know that God told us how to use it and we use it like He wants to. Or that bed, or, or that marriage, or whatever that be. Or, or our grandkids. Having the perspective that God is great changes everything. In verse number 14, it says, and the Redeemer speaks. I want you to think about the Redeemer. You can go back to that book in the Old Testament, Ruth. After my Ruth, it's so, Ruth surprised us this weekend from college. Thank you for coming in. She wanted to see her daddy. Nobody else. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. But it's good to have you. But that, that book in the Old Testament, Ruth, and talking about Boaz, yeah, go, look, go read it. Incredible story of how somebody is redeemed. Isn't that what Jesus did for us? While I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. Isn't, isn't that what our moms did to us? Even when I messed up, she may have picked me up and whooped me. She still says, you're mine, and nobody changes that. That's my girl. That's my boy. That's how God is. When, when I opened that newspaper and saw Emma Hobbs' name in that honor roll list, I said, Miracle baby. Didn't think she'd get here. 
see what God can do. And there's more coming. There's going to be a husband there one day. <gasps> Lee just had a heart attack. <laughs> He's our redeemer. You see, when they're out of my control, Gordon, <laughs> when they're out of my control, as we talked a minute ago, when they're out of my control, they're still in his control. When, remember, this says, when my Redeemer speaks, he, he speaks well. Like E.F. Hutton, you need to be listening. But here's the deal. Let me give you some thoughts. Job 19, 25. As for me, I know my Redeemer lives. Great song in that. And at the last, he will take his stand on earth. You think God's dead? You think he's done? Well, there are people around us who do was preaching Josh Hill's funeral yesterday and the person sitting about where Tracy is is an atheist um, and he won't look me in the eye and I'm praying for that guy's salvation will y'all pray for him I'm not going to tell you his name right now but this, I know that God's great and when he sees it it's going to change that man's life when we recognize that he's great just like Job Job remember the guy that lost everything the guy that had all the problems what did he say I ain't going to curse him I'm going to stick with him because he's going to stand up he wins in the end my redeemer lives Titus 2.14 who gave himself talking about Jesus who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession zealous for good deeds he's talking about us he redeemed us for our good deeds listen to this not only is our God great and is he our redeemer but he is for people. He is continually for people. I was talking to a lawyer, this has been several years ago, and I was asking him, he was a, um, a defense attorney, how in the world can you defend somebody who's done something so bad? Well, you don't know they're guilty. That may be his first thing. But here's the deal. When you're for people, you do things for people. I, when we give at the community fellowship or wherever organization you give to, I want to remind you, if you're giving for buildings, make sure that those buildings are support people and not just to be some memorial somewhere. And, and by the, I, I'm not trying to knock memorials, but here's the deal. It's about people. What's going to last after this world is gone and after everything's burned up? People. By the way, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're going to realize that there are people, souls in hell. But if you do know Jesus, there's going to be an awesome place in heaven where there are no tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, and I want to be there with him. That's who our Savior is. Titus says our Redeemer, Redeemer came, but there are people, people that are for God. And people, this is the reason that God is for us. People, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Let me take you back to listening to Israel or thinking about Israel or thinking about the people of God. When they recognized who he was, they began to go his direction. But when they began to forget, and they forgot a lot, they began to go their own direction. They suffered for 40 years out there in the desert. They did some incredibly stupid things. And they began to grumble. And life just was not very good when they forgot to recognize God. Okay? You hearing me? God is great. Right? Or here you go. God is good. And all the time. So in verse number 15, the people of God are reminded, listen, who is He? He is the Lord. Is He yours? What, what is the word Lord? Let me give you a definition, if you will. The word Lord is boss. One of our favorite words lately, okay? The boss. He is the boss. He is number one. Is it because He wants to hurt me? No, it's because He wants to help me. If you go back in the, in the olden days and you talk about the people who owned the land, the lord of the manor, the one who was in charge, he was there to get everything he could out of the land, right? Just like an owner of a business, he wants to get everything he can or, or help his community, however it is. We have the Lord who is number one. Not only is he the Lord, but he's your holy one. Man, it's trustworthy, holy, perfect. You know anybody like that? I don't. I haven't met anybody yet. Julie's close when she's next to me. So uh, the Holy One. Some of y'all get that here in a minute, okay? So He is the Lord. He is the Holy One. He is the Creator. By the way, I forget that one a lot. He's the Creator. Why do we worry? Philippians chapter 4. Preached it last week. Do y'all remember that? Yes or no? Those of you who were here, you should remember that. Philippians chapter 4. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Thank you. You must have heard the Scripture or me or something. Here's the deal. Um, when we know who He is and that he is in charge, we will worry less about the things that we have no control over. By the way, there are some things I have some control over. My choices. Are you with me? What I look at. What I think. What I eat. 
We have, we have this creator God who is Lord, who is the Holy One, who is the creator. The last thing it says about Him, the fourth thing it says, He is the King. When we'll remember that God is great and He is the King over all, we'll begin to worship Him more, not just because He's over all, but because He loves us and He wants us to be a part of everything. Revelation chapter 4, verse number 8. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings. This is kind of um, sci-fi here. And, and all are full of eyes around and within. All day and night, they did not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy. Y'all start with me, okay, right there. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. They didn't cease all night long. Holy, holy. They didn't cease at all. Holy, holy. Why is it that they didn't cease? Because they realized God was great. I, however you, I hope you get this. If we'll just remember, if we'll just put our eyes on and be thinking about our God is great, it's going to change our perspective of the past, of the present, and of the future that God has for us. Let's go on. Number two, not only is God great, but God is great, and he's up to something. He's up to something good. He's up to something incredible. In fact, some of the things he's up to in your life, you'd rather not have. Listen, we are human. Anybody else? I like some things in my life that are not the best things for me, okay? It hurts when I... Don't do the things that God wants us to have. We need to understand that God is up to some incredible things. In verse number 16, he begins to say some... Listen, look at verse number 16, if you've got your Bible open still. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. See, I'm the Lord, and he's giving them a reminder. I want to remind you what I did in the past. I want you to see this and think about this. I made a way when there seemed to be nothing. Has God ever done that for you? You know, you don't think that you're going to be able to come out from under all of that difficulty and then there's light. You think that it's all lost and then finally there's an incredible win. Why? Because God says there's always hope. Always. If we'll just know that He's great, we'll see that He's up to something. So he brings all these people together. Again, verse number 16 and 17, he begins to talk about those people. And he says, I'm going to deal with these. I, I, I'm going to send great things that direction. And I want you to remember, listen, so that we can move on, so that we can see greater things. Boy, I, I wish... Okay, in verse number 18, here we go. It says, but forget all that. Uh, li listen carefully. In verses 16... 15, 16 and, 7, or 16, and 17, he says, Listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my mighty army to Egypt with chariots and horses. I, I drew them beneath the waters. Remember this? When they were pursuing you, what did I do? I, they died. Has God ever taken all of your sorrows or all your struggles and said, Listen, I got this. And we worried and worried and worried, and finally God said, Listen, I got this. And it all fell into place. Isn't that what he did here? He said, I remind you, they may be after you, you may be crying, but I got it. And I got it next time too. That's not good English, but I got it. God's got your back. Let me just remind you the DNA that exists at the Community Fellowship. Okay, Ten years ago... Um, there were a, a few group of people, a, a few group of people. Well, that's a good English, more English. I'm going to have more good English coming, okay? There was a, a group of people who began to meet. Um, and, and we met at Main Street Grocery in Bassett. There is no more. Um, Lee Hobbs, Tommy Bruce, Cindy Deomes, and myself. Anybody else? I'm missing anybody? I think that's it, right, Tom? We began to talk about the DNA. And I want to tell you, we, we had a lot of things going on around those tables, and it was an incredible time. I missed, I missed some of that early time. But there was this weird lady who came to me during that time, and she said, you know what we ought to do? We ought to have a clothes closet. It's all your fault, April Haynes. <laughs> but seriously, it started on December the 24th of 2006, that first clothes closet. And now we're clothing over 300 people a month here at the Community Fellowship because you had, and I, I believe God gave it to us, but he birthed it there. You know what? He's going to do it again. What is that next one? I'm not real sure. You know, he sent us, sent us to Roanoke to learn about feeding. 
And what is he doing? There were 60 fed last night. There'll be 100 or 250 or so fed next weekend. And on and on. Why? Because God said the DNA of this church will be about other people being fed, being served, so they can see the greatness of their God. See, that's the DNA. That's what I believe that God made this church for. And if, and if that doesn't scratch where you're itching, maybe you need to go find somewhere else. But here's the deal. I believe that if you want to serve, this is a great place to be. Let me give you some thoughts on this. Um, Psalms 34, verse number 18. For the Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Have you ever been brokenhearted? Mm. Psalms 147, verse number 3. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Isn't that good? Go with me for just a minute. There was a temple in the olden days, way back in the days Jesus was alive. And the people would gather there and they would read the scriptures. Great people around, okay? Pharisees and, and, and all these other people were the church leaders or the synagogue leaders were there. And, and this guy, Jesus, had come. Not really sure who he was. Some knew that he was um, the, the sent one or the Messiah. But few really did and few understood it. And Jesus walked into the synagogue that day and he, and he picked up what they knew as the Bible, right? It was a scroll. And he unrolled it and he began to read it to them. Isaiah chapter 4, verses 18 through 21. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Are you with me? Jesus is reading from the scroll to the group of people who gathered at the synagogue that day. Y'all with me? Yes or no? Yes. He said, here it is on the screen. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and beyond. You got that, James? Luke 4. 18. Come on. No, yes. Okay. Help me out. Here we go. Here we go. I want you to follow this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You with me? Come on now. Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who were oppressed. Keep going. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Keep going. And he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. And the eyes of everybody in the synagogue were fixed on Jesus. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Okay? Okay? You got all the church leaders around. The people who think they're somebody as well as the people are somebody. And Jesus says, the promise of that scripture has become true with what you see in front of you today. Either that guy right there, I'm, I'm speaking from being an attendant or somebody along the side, either that fellow is a lunatic, a liar, or before us is the Lord of Lords. By the way, you and I all have to answer that question because there's some things that God calls us to do. <laughs> That's not what I want to do, Lord. <laughs> I, I, I want to move to the big house, not the little house. Yeah. You see, God has a plan. And inside the DNA of the community fellowship is to proclaim, just like Jesus did, release to the captives. We've walked in some of those directions, but we're going to walk in some others, especially with those, I believe, in the coming years, hopefully beginning sooner than later, for those caught in addiction. I, I believe that God's got some stuff for us. In verse number 19, let's keep going. It says, I'm here to do something new. Look around you. It's already begun. Are you aware of this? Look in verse number 19. Again, he says it. Out, out. Boy, I need to put on the glasses, don't I? For I'm about to do something new. Do you see it? <laughs> it's right here. You see it? You ever had anybody do that for you? It's here. Look. Can't you see it? Julie and I will be driving down the road, and I'll point at something, and I'll say, do you see it? And she said, no, because she's looking at the bug on the windshield, and I'm looking at the out in the field over there, okay? We just don't communicate the same, do we? Okay. You need to start thinking like I think, okay? <laughs> no? I've told you this before. The first time I took her to Oklahoma, we were driving down I-40. This is from Arkansas and into Oklahoma, and she sees over in this whatever she sees and she says look at that city over there and I'm like Julie hold on look at it again and it was a grain elevator she thought it was a high rise building you can take the girl away from Georgia but you can't take the Georgia away um, we don't see things the same do we? we we've seen some things the same through the years um, 
when the girls were real little right before we moved here and we were going through some really, really difficulties and God gave us three or four scriptures to, to hold. The scriptures gave us the ability to see something together. By the way, church, you want to see something together? Don't listen to me. Listen to him. Because he said, I want to give you a DNA that's like none I've ever, ever given. It's something new. I, 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 want to make, I want to give you rivers in the desert. Listen, I'm going to give you a path where there was none before. Why? Because I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something incredible. I, I'm going to give you roads where there was none before. I, I'm going to give you rivers where there was none before. Point number three of the sermon is this. Not only is God great and he's up to something, but here's the deal. It's time to keep our praising of God in place. He is a great God and he is worthy of our praise. Amen? Come on now. He's worthy of our praise. Amen? We can become Pentecostal for just a little bit. His praise will happen. In this verse, verse number 20, it begins to say that, and the wild animals in the field will thank me. You know what that says? And the wild animals, they're going to praise me too. Luke 19, 40. But Jesus said, I'll tell you, if these, these people he's pointing at become silent, then those rocks will cry out. He's going to get praise. He's going to be praised. And it, it's we as a church family and churches in this community that ought to be lifting up Jesus. Jesus said, when, I, when I'll be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to me. And I would like to have people drawn to Jesus. How about you? There's a reason for praise. I, I, I like this part. I was, just, I was reading right before I started preaching, and this came alive to me. Um, Again, in verse number 20. And yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. You, you ever get thirsty? Yeah. Here's your refreshing. That, that's who our God is. And you know what the, the Scripture can do? It's kind of like that bottle of water that you open up after you've been working, okay, or thinking so hard, you know what I'm talking about, when you're, just, when you're parched. And it's incredible how the Word of God begins to feed you or soothe you or refresh you. 2006 has now given way to 2016. What's going to happen between now and 2026? I hope Jesus comes back. But I also hope before He does that we take a whole lot more people with us. You with me? Philippians 4.19 For my God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That new campus needs to get, get done. But He's going to supply it in His time. Not 70 years, though. In His time. He's given us new hope. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 10. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy... But now you have received mercy. Verse number 21 of Isaiah 43. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Here it is. 